بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد This recording is to go over with you resource number six from our Ajur Rumiya workbooks on page number 110 of that workbook. We have resource six. أسئلة مراجعة من الدرس السادس These are review questions that go with the sixth lesson. So what's expected here is that you have studied the sixth lesson. Hopefully you have memorized the text of Al-Muqaddimah, Al-Ajur Rumiya, all the way up to lesson number six by this point. But if not, you are very familiar with it at least, and you are prepared to answer questions about understanding specifically the sixth lesson at this time. This is not a comprehensive review activity. This is a specific review activity for the sixth lesson only. And of course, it's not absolutely isolated, but the review questions will be centered around the sixth lesson about the harf. And this activity is kind of a hybrid activity of answers. You have three multiple choice questions. The answers can be found in the answer key. And then the rest of the questions require open answers. And that's what makes this review really important for those tasks. السؤال الأول The first question تعريف الحرف كما في المقدمة الآج الرومية هو The definition of a harf as found in the آج الرومية primer is A. ما ليس باسم ولا فعل Whatever is not an ism nor a fi'l B. ما لا يصلح معه دليل الاسم ولا دليل الفعل what does not or cannot have the sign of a noun or a verb. C. ما دل على معنى في نفسه That which has a meaning in and of itself. Or D. ما دل على معنى في غيره That which has a meaning which is connected to and manifested within some other word. Now, some of these answers are correct in terms of the definition of a harf or a description of a harf. However, notice the question, كَمَا فِي الْمُقَدِّمَةِ الْآجُرُّ As is stated in the آجُرُّ مِيَّ مُقَدِّمَةِ And that is, B, the wording chosen by the author is, وَالْحَرْفُ مَا لَا يَصْلُحُ مَعَهُ دَلِيلُ الْإِسْمِ وَلَا دَلِيلُ الْفِعْلِ B is the correct answer choice. As for A, then that is an alternate definition that I suggested in class. It may be better or more accurate, and Allah knows best. However, it is not the correct answer for this question because it is not the choice of the author. The same thing with answer choice D. It is مَا دَلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي غَيْرِهِ The scholars of the Arabic language mention this as a definition of the harf as well. However, it is not what Ibn Ajur Rum chose to say in his Muqaddimah. And as for C, it's just wrong. It's not correct at all. مَا دَلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نَفْسِهِ That could be referring to a fi'l, and that could be referring to an ism. But it could not be referring to a harf, because the harf, in contrast to the nouns and verbs, is مَا دَلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي غَيْرِهِ that which has meanings which are connected to other words. No meanings in and of themselves. السؤال الثاني The second question. مثال الحرف جاء لمعنى An example of a harf that has come with a meaning. Meaning not an alphabetical letter, but a harf which is from حروف الخفض. A. هو B. يجلس C. طاء or D, an. And of course you should know the correct answer here is D, an. Those huruf have been named previously. Going back to lesson four, the huruf al khavd are named. Wahiya min, wa'ila, wa'an. It's the third one named in the text. So the correct answer choice here is D. As for A, huwa, that's a pronoun. B, yajlisu. That's a verb. And C, ta, is just an alphabetical letter. 
السؤال الثالث مثال كلمة ليست بحرف لكن ليس معها دليل الاسم ولا دليل الفعل This question is a bit complex. You need to choose an example of a word that is not a harf, but it also doesn't have any sign of being a noun or any sign of being a fi'l. And this was the flaw in the definition offered by the author, if you recall, the class. A. Fi. B. Jabirun. C. Aishatu. Or D. Al Muslimatu. So, firstly, we're looking for a word that is not a harf. So, we have to eliminate A because it is a harf. That's one of the named huruf from lesson four. So, we're left with, by process of elimination here, B, C, and D. So, Jabirun has tanween at the end. That's a sign of al-ism, dalil al-ism. And we're looking for a word that doesn't have any signs of an ism or a fi'l. So that eliminates B as well. And so we're left with C or D. Now, al-muslimatu has alif lam in the beginning, and that is a sign of asma, of nouns. So we have to eliminate D. As far as the signs of nouns and verbs that have been mentioned in this muqaddima, Aisha too does not have any sign of a fi'l. It doesn't have any sign of a verb. In fact, it is an ism, but it doesn't have one of the four signs of an ism mentioned by Ibn Ajur Rum, rahimahullah. So C is the correct answer choice. As-su'al rabiu The fourth question. مثل لحرف من حروف المعاني جاء قبل اسم مباشرا. You need to provide an example of a harf, one of the حروف المعاني. Those are حروف الخفض or حروف القسم that comes before an ism directly مباشرا, directly before an ism. Notice you're not being asked to extract this from a specific Quranic passage or anything. Just you now provide an example from yourself, from the Quran, or from regular speech. Methil. That means provide a mithal. So you could say, Wallahi. I swear by Allah. Wallahi. The wow is a harf min huruf al ma'ani. It's a harf qasam, and it comes before the name of Allah. You could say, Zaydun fil bayti. Fi al bayti. There's the harf min huruf al ma'ani. Fi. And then al bayt is the noun right after it. And you could have answered with a number of other possible examples as well. As su'al al khamis, the fifth question. Mathil li harfin min huruf al khavdi. Ja'a qabla fi'lin mubashiran. Give an example of one of the huruf al-khavd that comes directly before a fi'l. Look at that question carefully. Do you see anything wrong with it? Give an example of a harf from the huruf al-khavd that comes right before a fi'l. You should say, لا يمكن. That's not possible. Mustahil, impossible, la yujadu. This kind of thing is not found in the Arabic language. Why? Because when you have a harfu khavd, you know that the next word must be an ism. So there's no example of a harf khavd and then a fi'l coming right after it. It does not exist in the Arabic language. Another one of those curveballs that keeps you on your toes, insha'Allah ta'ala. غفر الله لي ولكم May Allah forgive me and all of you. السؤال السادس, the sixth question. والأخير, the sixth and final question. قال تعالى لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد these are the opening verses of Surah Al-Balad. Istakhrij min al-ayati ismayni wa fi'lan 
وحرفا من حروف الخفض Extract from the text Two nouns, a verb, and a harf from حروف الخفض A harf خفض وبين علامة الاسمين والفعل And then explain or identify the signs of the two nouns what makes them nouns, the sign that indicates that's a noun, and the sign of the fi'l. And why aren't you being asked to indicate the sign of the harf? Because the sign of the harf is that it is a word that doesn't have any signs. Okay, so let's get into it. Ismun, where's your first ism? You could put al-balad. And alamatuhu, its sign of being an ism is... الألف واللام The alif lam in the beginning You could also have said هذا هذا is an ism And the sign of it being an ism is the باء before it بهذا You could also have chosen حل وأنت حل حل is an ism And you know it's an ism because of the تنوين حل and also, you could have chosen walidin because of the tanween as well. And you could have chosen al-insan because of the alif lam. Or you could have chosen the last word too, kabadin, because of the tanween. Now, as for our choice of a fi'l, then uqsimu is actually a fi'l, but it doesn't have one of the signs of being a fi'l mentioned by the author Ibn Ajur Rum, rahimahullah. So let's go to the word khalaqna in the fourth verse. That's preceded by laqad. And so that's a fi'l that has one of the signs of a fi'l. Khalaqna is the fi'l and alamatuhu is qad. The word qad coming before it. And remember that qad could have a lamb or a wow and a lamb, wala qad. It could have a fa before it, fa qad. It could have a fa and a lamb, fa la qad, and so on. And as for the last request here, harf, where is our harf? Well, we have the ba from bihad al barad twice in the first and second verses. We have the wow al qasam. From wawalidin, that's a wow. The first of the two wows that begins that phrase is wawul qasam, which is a harf. And you could have also chosen the fi near the end, fi kabadin. It is one of those huruful khavd that we have studied. I hope you did well with this activity as well. Barakallahu fikum fi juhudikum, fi awqatikum, wa fi ahlikum, wa fi amwalikum. وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين